Hello and welcome to a CBK Gaming review video. Today we are taking a look at Massive Darkness by Simon Games and Guillotine Games. It's a one to six player cooperative dungeon crawler set in the same world as Zombicide. In fact, there's some crossover miniatures. Um, we're actually looking at everything from the Kickstarter campaign that was launched. And that includes the crossover kits with Green Horde, the crossover kits with Black Plague, um, all the various little add-ons, uh, everything that, that came with that Kickstarter. So, we'll begin by looking at the content, and you get a lot. <laughs> um, you do. Overwhelming number of miniatures. Um, Especially when you then add in the expansions with Zombicide. So you've got if you've got the Horde box from Green Horde, if you've got the um, No Rest for the Wicked, and I can't remember. The Friends and Foes. Friends and Foes, that's right. Um, Wolfberg and Black Plague. Yeah. There are so many miniatures, so many opportunities for different monsters to appear that it can actually take you a long time just to dig out the miniatures <laughs> needed to place on the table. So overall, I have to give it a 10. Yeah. There is so much that you get for your money with this. Even the base game, just the core set, there is a lot of miniatures. And these miniatures, um, I know our friend Jamie and Aid... Um, they use these miniatures for role-playing, d and um, And that's what I see these miniatures for. You can use them for any sort of game that you're playing. We've used them for, I again, we've, for we've Dungeons & Dragons. We've taken for d and yeah. Yes. Um, when Chris ran our 5th edition campaign, um, we used a couple of the ogres to, uh, to simulate the ogres on the table. Um, the doors... Uh, the The... Bridges, yeah. the and chests, the pillars. the pillars, all of these items we use in other games as well. Um, especially games like Mansions of Madness or um, Lord of the Rings, yeah. Journeys in Middle Earth. When you need to build something on the table, um, for example, one of the adventures in the new Lord of the Rings game is a pub. And we use bits and pieces from all sorts of games, Conan... Um, this and and other bits and pieces just to build up that and, and give that immersive feel to a game more atmosphere more isn't atmosphere. It, to the board yeah um, so what do you think of the quality of the pieces well what would you give content wise I'd, I'd agree with 10 with 10 yeah okay so quality um, yeah again it, it's good good quality um, the cards well done I, I'm going to take a point away simply for the need of these paper character sheets that they have. So every um, every playing character gets to choose a career. Um, they're, a, they're a piece of paper that you mark out. We actually laminated them and, and use um, uh, chalk markers to mark off what skill and XP we spent. Just so that we don't have to keep wading through rubbish um, torn paper. Um, so I give it a 9 out of 10 for its quality. The miniatures, which I'll put some images of the miniatures um, at the end of the video um, or and, and cycle through a few now. Um, as you can see, they are fantastic quality. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I was going to go with 10. You say about these and I think, mm, maybe I should go 9. But I'm going to stick with 10 because we have played this game a lot. We've had many weekends and the boards aren't showing any sign of wear mm -hmm. and the cards aren't either. And to me, it shows good quality when you can play it the number of hours that we have and it still looks like a new game when we get it out the box. It's a fair point. It's, yeah. Yeah, they're really well printed and, and so, well done. Well, that segues nicely into Fun Factor. Um, <laughs> so, this is a great fun game to play. Um... It's it's pretty light hearted, doesn't take itself too seriously. Um, it's not a game I always want to want to get to the table. So for that and that alone, I'm going to give it a seven out of ten. 
Um, it's there is a lot of preparation for this game. Uh, having to find all the miniatures, having to trawl through all the different bits and pieces just to get the, the what we need for this, especially as we've added all the crossover cards and the crossover with all the various games. I just feel that I get more enjoyment from a lot of the other games that we've got. Okay. Still, I still think yep. seven out of yep. ten is a good good score. Yeah. Um, I'm actually going to go nine because anytime someone mm -hmm. says, do you fancy this game? I'm straight in there. I do enjoy playing it. <laughs> and I don't do the setup. You always set it up. So I don't have the problem yeah. with the figures. <laughs> Otherwise I probably would knock it down as well. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoy it. There are a few things that niggle, but I'm putting that more into the complexity grouping, which we'll come to in a minute, which is why I'm going to stick with, with nine for the fun factor. But there are a few points against it. So leading into complexity, if I may then. <laughs> okay. Um, for me, it's it's a great game and you go through the dungeon, you're picking up lots of loot, and then you get all the pieces start working together. And there's things like the king's um, set, mm -hmm. where you get the king's armour, the king's crown, the king's mace. And if you've got all three, or even just two of them, um, they work together so you get extra die or you take defence away from the enemy when you're attacking. Um, now that's great to do and you feel really empowered with it, but when you come to make an attack or make a defence roll, the game almost pauses because then you're working out all the different cards and the combinations to work out how many dice you have to roll. Then once you've rolled them, You've got to work out, well, this card actually negates that die, so we'll take that one out. And so it takes a couple of minutes before you can work out how much damage you've done or defended, which, when you're playing it, is fine. I just feel that other players, you're then waiting for that person to make Your an attack. Your go can take a lot longer. Yeah. Um, and whilst we say about all the dice, the one interesting thing that Massive Darkness did is you never throw more than three dice of any colour. Yeah. But there um, are four colours. But there are four <laughs> colours. Um, two of which roll. are defensive. Yes. Um, but you roll the defensive of the place and you're yes. attacking. At the same time. Yeah. Um, yes. <clears throat> this is a very simple game. Um, yeah. it, it's simple set of mechanics. Um, I don't think they've been particularly implemented well. Um I, I think, as you say, combat can be overly clunky. Um, there's a, it, It's a dice thrower. There is a lot of dice to throw. So if you don't enjoy dice games, this really yeah. isn't the game for you. Um, I enjoy it because I don't mind that randomness. Um, I, I would rather more of a storytelling mm -hmm. element to the game. Um, which is where my personal preference falls for things like folklore or um, some of the games that we saw uh, recently. Um, you see, I treat this as a much more light-hearted game. Yes. It's not a, it is run as a campaign, but I don't in my head look at it as a campaign. Um, let's touch on that on the replayability. Okay. So complexity for me... Um, I think 7 out of 10, it's not complex. Yeah. The rules are well written. Um, as with every Simon game, they, they do a fantastic yeah. job of writing their rules out. Um, the cards tell you exactly what to do. Uh, there's a couple of times where you, you have to sort of work out what's meant, but it's, it's not that bad. Um, the complexity for me is, as you say, the... the large amount of dice, working all the bits and pieces out, can sometimes be a little bit tiresome if you've got six players um, and one player is taking a long... Especially with some of the artefacts giving you extra goes, that one person's go can become quite tiresome for the other yeah. players. Um, and for that reason, I'd, I'd give it a 7 out yeah, of 10. Yeah, and I, I go for a 7 as well. Replayability. Um, so, 
Um, I think that they tacked on the campaign element of this game. It doesn't feel like it belongs. This feels like Zombicide, and somebody had a, an idea to um, add on, tack on the career aspect and the um, the XP. It doesn't work very well, personally. Um, if you, there are two versions of XP. One is you just get XP for killing everything, um, and you will level your character will reach godlike levels very early on you'll be killing everything and the dungeons will become far far too easy then there is what they call micro xp where um, you need five micro xp equals one normal xp now it certainly slows the whole thing down but you still become very powerful the items still are very powerful the artifacts are very powerful um and we we've played it correctly and then we've actually looked at some home rules and i think there's a lot of people out there yeah. talking to, talking to others who play this game that use a lot of home rules just to improve things and make it a little bit more um challenging yeah, we, some of those we started are saying not taking an artifact into the next dungeon so at the yeah. end of one chapter any artifacts you've picked up get shuffled back into the loot because Although they are, le you have to get, the dungeons are levelled, so each board has a number on it. And once you enter that board, everyone, so sort of that's the level of loot that you can then find and the level of items you can use. So artifacts don't start at the very beginning, but if you've already got oh, one in level your hand. Four. Yeah. They are level four items. And you but can't to have one in your hand, as soon as you get into the level four square, it just, it suddenly you become overpowered yeah. by stepping through a doorway. So taking those out and you have to find them just keeps the game at a bit of a better pace. It, it does. Um, I don't think a game should require home rules to make it playable. Yeah. Um, and uh, you've got some really amazing monsters in this. So you've got your normal everyday infantry that you come against. Um, your, your goblins, your, your ratlings, etc. And then you've also got these really beautifully sculptured monsters. Um, and they fall really disappointingly easily. Uh, yes. At times yeah. that uh, at one handful of dice and that monster is dead. And it, it's a real shame. Because actually some of the adventures that they've put um, on, the, on the table are really, really good. The um, one that we've got set up at the moment, which is an immortal troll, is very, very well done. Um, and that it's an unkillable monster. And the only way you can kill it is to allure it over the bridge and bring the bridge down. Um, it's a really good mechanic. It's, it works yeah. really well. It's a good puzzle game, isn't it? Because yes. Because it's working out the timings of... Can we get everything we need in place to then get the troll to step onto the bridge at that point? And it all comes to within a sort of a get a go. So each person's yeah. got to work out their go as a team and then bring everything in together. It's a great little puzzle on this. It, it does work very well. It does rely on you having players that are prepared to work together. Yeah. Um, we have played this with some people that um, just want to rush off, do their own thing, get as much loot as they can. And... and if you don't work with the other players, yeah. um, it, it it's not very fun for everybody. Um, and on top of that, this game also can suffer from the alpha player. Yeah. In that, um, and in particular, this and, and there's another one with where you're chasing a spider out of the dungeon. Yeah. Um, there are some plays which you would expect to and, and there can be some argument over um yeah. well why aren't you doing x y and z and i think that can be a little but i think cooperative games tend to be um a problem for that anyway um but it needs to be it needs to be mentioned to be addressed, yeah. um so yeah replayability for me is six out of ten yeah i'd say six um as I said, and, we and, do also, enjoy and also it. again it's a board game there's only so many variations there are going to be and at the moment there's only the stories 
There's these. Mm -hmm. We've also got the element elementals. The one thing that is really good with a lot of these games is that they put other adventures up on their um, website. But again, we're looking at what came in the box set. Um, the one thing um, to all of this is we play this with Zombicide. Um, so these boards can be used in Zombicide to make up your own adventures, and, and that I do really like. Uh, I think it's it's quite good to use all these elements in in another game. Um, and the thing I've what we haven't pointed out on this that's different um, from the Zombicide is that these have light and dark squares, and your abilities, your character abilities change depending on which square you're in. Yep. So I think it's a nice little. But yes, extra. that's the the, the, the yeah. darkness element. Um, Okay, so um, overall, I must say, as much as I do enjoy playing this game, I was a bit underwhelmed by it. I really enjoy Zombicide. Um, we will sit down and play Zombicide quite a bit. I don't have a problem that there's no campaign with it. I don't have a problem that there are hundreds and hundreds of miniatures. Um... I expected something more. It was a little bit lacklustre. Um, there are far better campaign games out there. There are far better dungeon crawlers out there. This is a good gateway into some of those worlds, mm -hmm. which is what I enjoy about it. It doesn't take itself too seriously. It's not yeah. that dark. It's quite cartoony. Um, and we can sit down and have a laugh with friends. And you can have a laugh with six friends. Six players for this. Um, there's a lot of dungeon crawlers which are still only four player. And they really, really need more than that. Yeah. Um, so overall for me, this is a five out of ten. It's a good game. It's not a great game. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's why I'd go with a six. I started off absolutely loving this game and it was it was one of the um dungeons where all of us had struggled through to the last bit and then we knew that once we got onto a certain tile the big bad monster was going to appear and by the time we got there i'd got so many cards that were all working together so well that in i think it was one roll i'd completely destroyed the big bad guy it was sort of anticlimactic really it was we'd struggled through the goblin archers and we'd all taken damage and we'd struggled through the troglodytes and then we finally got to the big bad monster and I, I just wiped him out in one hit and because and it was because of the combination of the cards and the skills yeah. that you can pick up that it just and that was through the campaign style that it just didn't quite work for me and that's when I started going it's a good fun game but it's not the big campaign that you think it's going to be but it's it's still a really enjoyable game but i yes. see it more as a one-off let's do this dungeon tonight now rather than yes and that, that's how we've been playing it really um so there you have it massive darkness our, our review of massive darkness by simon games and by guillotine games um First of all, we'd like to say thank you as well to all our new subscribers and and welcome and hopefully you'll enjoy some of the <laughs> games that we've got coming up. Um, the next video is going to be uh, a review of what we had demoed at the UK Games Expo. Yep. Um, and there's some very interesting games and some <laughs> really good, some, some bits of information that were not openly shared, I think. Um, we asked some questions and got some nice interesting answers back from some of the companies about different products they're currently looking at or things that they're currently working on. So we're going to be putting that video um, live at some point um, in the next week or so. Um, if you enjoy what you saw, please like and subscribe. It does mean a lot. We do really appreciate the, the followers and um, trying to get as much information out and, and different reviews. We're going to start ramping up the number of videos that we do. Um, and hopefully it'll be more than one a month. We're going to aim to do um, one a fortnight, and if we can get to one a week, that's that's <laughs> going to be our aim. Um, we, we're going to be seeing more from Chris uh, as yeah. well, um, 
and yes we'll, we'll hopefully um, be looking at a couple of other games I think the next review we've got an unboxing of Skull Tales yep. um, yep. which we'll do yesterday. Yep. Um, and we're looking forward to playing that we will play it five times before yep. we do a review but we will do that hopefully in, in the next week or so um, but we're also going to look at um, Gloom of Killforth um, I, and, and the artwork on that because we really love the artwork for that um, so that'll give you an idea of what we, we think <laughs> of that um, and we're also working on our Village Attacks review as well um, so thank you very much and um, leave a comment in the section below if there's any games that you'd like us to look at thank you thank you <laughs> <laughs>